And just remember this, God's children are not for sale. Recording started. Here we are. Back again. Tag team. Back again. That's the way old song. Probably only the <laughs> the, so the old people watching us even know what that even means. Um, hey guys, how you guys doing? It is Shelly and I back on Um it is good to be back. Uh, Shell and I have been on a bit of a hiatus, I guess, because uh, Shell was on vacation. Uh, apparently, her bird misses her as well. Apparently, um, he is covered. Sorry, Lorraine. It's all right. Well, <laughs> we'll have to live through it. Um, man, it's good to be back. Uh, we want to thank you guys. If you're following us on Facebook, holy moly, thanks for doing that. Uh, wow. It just kind of blew up uh, for the past, I guess week and a half two, two weeks. weeks yeah um we literally went from I, I go out of town and we have 139 followers i come back in town and we have 18.4 thousand well we had 16 alone. right and then the last two weeks or last week i guess has been like another 2200 or something kind of ridiculous man so thank you guys man for following us um i'm glad you know we struck a nerve clearly we're you know saying something that wants to be heard. Um, we love you guys. Bless you. That's awesome. So we're going to move forward with this bad boy. Guys, you can follow us on Spotify. That's basically our home. You can actually subscribe to us uh, for as little as $3. We've made a decision that uh, I think it's probably best and easiest, uh, both for the amount for you guys and also the bang for your buck um, and what we can produce, given that we're two working adults with uh children of varying ages and lifestyles and existences so um support us if you guys would like to and would like to have more content like this and more content like the ctdw not just cosmovision we shelly and i have talked at length at great length that this is something we'd like to do full time so if that's within your capability to give we would be super grateful um and if you can't don't cool. sweat it we definitely believe if God wants us to be heard, then he's going to yeah. put us out there. Absolutely. And we definitely want you to hear us. Yeah, absolutely. Money and I think or sands, money. It's, it's, uh, right. uh, it's very clear that God put us in the spotlight. It was not something that we were expecting or <clears throat> by any stretch of the imag imagination. Um, so you're welcome to do that on Spotify. You can also give uh, any gift of any amount if you'd like to on Patreon. And um, perhaps in the coming months uh, or year or so, well, probably hopefully next few months, we're going to have some merch that's available for you guys. And uh, there will be some perks if you guys want to sign up over on um, Patreon at a later date. Right now, it's kind of up in the air, but we're you can definitely sign up for three books over at Spotify. So go do that if you'd like to. We're also on YouTube, Rumble. We are soon to be on Wisdom. They uh, Somebody actually sent me a... Um, Wisdom is an app that's like a social app, but it's like talking. So I'll probably set up our podcast over there. They can check us out. Um, yeah, we're just kind of growing. It's very exciting. And we thank you guys for sticking around with us. We're going to, I guess, not waste too much more time. You can follow us, I'm sure you know, solo.to slash ctdw, solo.to slash ctdw, solo.to slash ctdw. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, sorry, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and uh, Twitter, all four of those. Um, Absolutely. Potentially more to come. But uh, for now, that's where we're at. And actually, we have a phone call on my side. Sorry about that, guys. Um, uh this Friday, well, by the time this is up, it'll already be there. We're having a, a Facebook Live on Friday, and we're going to probably start doing that a little bit more regularly. Um, goodness, I said a mouthful. I think I'm tired of talking. I'm going to let Shell take the reins and kind of tell you guys what we're talking about today. 
Well, hello everyone. We are <laughs> using a new, uh, what is this thing called? Platform. And yes. so Ricky is playing with it. We're figuring it out. Having By fun. We, I definitely mean way more Ricky and way less me. <laughs> but <clears throat> we really do like it. We think that the um, experience for you is going to be better with it. And um, we have a difficult topic that, that we're going to uh, react to tonight. Today is July the 9th and five days ago on the, I guess, the 4th. So that would be five days ago. Doing Very fitting. Shelley. Um, the Sound of Freedom released to U.S. Uh, theaters ac across the nation. And um, it's a story, if you don't know anything about it, well, you, you'll find out as you keep watching. But it's a, it's, it's a story of one of Tim Ballard's operations. And Tim had come across my YouTube feed a couple of, I'm going to say months ago. My husband and I were out running errands. And I um, put it on in our truck because I started watching it and thought, oh my gosh, Misery Loves Company and Danny got to be company. Um, and we listened to Tim talk about one of his um, missions freeing children from sex trafficking. And it was hard to watch. My husband <laughs> basically told me I can't listen to this anymore. I can't listen to it. And, yeah. and so we stopped the video, but um, I was so impressed with this man. What a true, true hero, like true hero. Yeah. And then <clears throat> if you watch The Chosen and do it and watch anything on through Angel Studios, um, you will have seen the videos for The Sound of Freedom and or the video trailers and I had um, and I'm, I was very excited to see it. Uh, like Ricky said, um, I, I had an unexpected death in my family right before my, my uh, family was supposed to go on vacation, my nuclear family. So went and dealt with the funeral, um, of my stepfather and then, um, went in, in, spent time with my own kids and and it was very nice but the whole time in the background i was like man i really want to see this movie and i would talk with my children about it and of course they're like everybody else let's not talk about that um <laughs> because nobody wants to think it can be as bad as it is i no normal person dare i say it that way but um, then Jordan Peterson, who is a particular favorite of mine, what a wise man he is. I'm still praying for his salvation because I want him to really know Jesus because he just belongs in the kingdom of God. Um, he had Tim Ballard on along with Jim Caviezel, who, if you don't remember, he... Uh, played the, in the Count of Monte Cristo and he played Jesus in the Passion of the Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they both they both talked about um, this topic and why they were willing to do what they are doing um, with Jordan. And then Jordan in typical um, Dr. Jordan Peterson fashion broke down the psychology behind some of this, which for me was really great because sometimes you just think, how do people become monsters? And Jordan does a great job of breaking this down. So for the full video, which is, bah, what, almost two hours long, right? It's hour, and a, hour and a half, I think. Hour and a half. Um, please go watch it. I really recommend that you do. We'll have the link. You know how we do. Um <clears throat> But I want to start really quick, just with a with a um, a quick scripture, and that is Matthew nineteen 
14, where up here. Jesus is talking. He's, he's, you know, giving a talk Oops. as, as you do. I'm sorry. Oh, because my screen is sharing. I got you. I got you. I got you. Appreciate. Be patient and, with this, guys. And some rowdy kids come up and, you know, the apostles doing what they do. They're, they're like, yo, settle down, settle down. And Jesus tells them the most beautiful thing. So in verse 13, um, it, it, it says, uh, then children were brought to him that he might lay hands on them and pray, basically give a blessing. And the disciples rebuked the people. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. <clears throat> Jesus love is is so great um, for all of us but children who at that time you know were pretty much personas non grata but not to the Lord he loved he loved them he loves them a bit of a necessary nuisance huh all right, <laughs> a pretty great one, actually. Uh, when we were traveling back, my daughter uh, was traveling with us, and and my grandson who turned six months next week, and, and he was having a fit. He had had enough of um, of being in the vehicle, you know, at about hour I don't know eight or so. No six-month-old wants to be in a vehicle. Heck, no 60-year-old does either. Um, and he was being fussy, and and my daughter was kind of at wit's end. And I said, remember, hardest job, best job. Mm. And that's what kids are. They're the hardest job. Yep. They're the best job. Um, so let's bring up this video. Guys, the the content is hard. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's it's not something that was easy to watch. And again, I made my husband <laughs> watch it, and he said, um, "He goes, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it." And I was like, "Misery and Company, you're watching it." And so I put it on yeah. for our youngest yeah. son to watch with us as well. And and then Danny bought tickets to the showing tonight. <laughs> and uh, we're going as soon as Rick and I finish recording this. Yeah. So um, I'm going to Shelly go. beat me to it. I was trying to go this afternoon, but I <laughs> I just couldn't swing it. I couldn't make it happen. All right. Whenever you're ready, go for it. Dang it. That's good right there. Yeah, honestly, that's okay. fine. Because it's, it's going to go fast. And I'll edit it out. You might be protected against that, at least to some degree, because of your faith. So... Let's walk through what you learned and encountered first. What, what did you see when you were working as part of this child sex crimes unit? What I saw was so shocking, Jordan. Uh, I thought child sex crimes would be 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds. Uh, my brain couldn't comprehend something more evil than abusing that age. The very first case I worked in 2002, I believe, I was given a, a bunch of VHS videos, some hard drives to look at that, that had been seized and then weren't. The very first um, image I saw... Um, were um, there were three uh, three little boys uh, <clears throat> that were probably seven, five, and three, and they looked uh, like they looked like my children. They had, you know, they had blonde blonde eye, blonde hair, blue eyes, and they were being just raped, raped. These three little boys by this pedophile, and I was so shocked. I fell to my knees. I dry heaved, thinking I was going to throw up uh, into the wastebasket. I jumped into my car. I drove to my children's school, my three oldest kids. I checked them out. I still remember in my mind, I can still see dentist, dentist, dentist appointment I wrote. And I grabbed them. I took them home and just sobbed on the floor. My wife came in and I just, I wouldn't let the kids go. I was just holding them and shaking. Um, that was my very first experience. Uh, you talk about PTSD. I absolutely deal with PTSD to this day. Um, I, I took too long to actually deal with it. Uh, that's another story. Um, and I thought, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. Um, I started getting help immediately. Uh, because I didn't want to quit. Uh, and uh, that, that's, that's what this is. That's what this is. And um, those kind of videos have increased over the last couple of years by 5,000%. Uh, 
Yeah, well, in, in, in Canada, um, we just had a report from an organization called the Western Standard that one million child sexual exploitation photos and videos have been identified in an Alberta child porn investigation. One million photos, eight arrests made. Okay, so that's some indication of the widespread nature of the problem. Now, you said that when you first encountered this material, it made you physically ill and also terrified for the safety of your children, but then also it necessitated you seeking um, help, I suppose, or aid. I mean, I've worked with people who've had post-traumatic stress disorder. Generally, what happens is that tragedy is not enough to give someone post-traumatic stress disorder, even if it's rather severe. It has to be a combination of tragedy and malevolence. And the real trauma comes as a consequence of contact with evil, with malevolence. And what people generally have to do in order to recover from that is to develop a rather profound philosophy of evil. And, you know, a religious faith in, in its most fundamental essence is a philosophy of good and evil. It, it does detail out the heart of darkness among human beings, point out to people, and this is particularly, although you're not, not uniquely true of the Christian tradition, but particularly true that that capacity for evil lurks in the heart of everyone and that our fundamental moral obligation as we sojourn here on earth is to overcome that proclivity within and also to stand up against it in the external world. And so you said you received some aid after you had okay. been exposed to this okay. first set of videos. Um, no, I'm good with stopping right there. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a quick commentary if that's okay, actually. Absolutely. Okay. Um, when I, Shelly really was, was the one that, that brought this one up. And, and this is something that we had, had talked about, certainly talked about dealing with and, and touching on in, in, at some point. Um, and I think this, got, that God really allowed this one kind of to, to be on the, uh, the pulse at the moment. Um, it's, it's not something that we're unfamiliar with. It's not something that we hadn't thought about talking about on the contrary. Um, so this really, this movie really lended uh, the opportunity to talk about it on Cosmovision. So much so that Shell and I actually are going to make this into a, a short uh, mini series here on Cosmovision for the next few weeks, um, because I think it's it's worthwhile to to talk about. I, I want to make mention of a particular verse, actually, uh, that I think it behooves us to explore. And it's the one you were looking at, Shell. 18 verse, chapter 18 verse, what was it? Um, six, Matthew 18, 18 6. Okay. Okay. You know, Rick, while you're finding it, let me say to um, the next little bit that our uh, mini series is going to be on how, how Satan is using our kids in his war on God. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and warring against our kids at the same time. So that's what it's going to be t tonight. It's about sex trafficking. Uh, but that is by no means the only way he <laughs> is coming against us and our children yeah. and our God. Um, but we'll, we'll get into the others you know, uh, week, week by week, but the, I just want to kind of assure you, we're not going to talk about sex trafficking for the next three weeks, although we <laughs> certainly could. And there's, sure. there is need to, but I don't know that we'd be able to function As, much in our lives if we did. Right. As a matter of fact, actually, this is not where I wanted to touch on quite yet. What I, what I had in mind, um, so if you actually have something you wanted to go with, Shaw, I'm going to let you continue on this portion. It's so hard. Like, just watching Tim's reaction as he is remembering that video. Um, I also remember thinking that, tra that trafficking, sex trafficking would be with, you know, younger teenage kids, not children when he says three five seven i mean it's it's unimaginable unless some outside source brings that to your attention yeah um yeah 
Well, I don't have I don't have a lot of words that that I can say. Um, having been a victim of of abuse at the age of six, mm -hmm. um, I remember what that's like. But it was one person for well, it was one adult for me, and um, it wasn't hundreds in in another uh, interview Tim does he talks about this girl actually gosh is it an interview or is it when he goes before Congress in um, 2019 it, it was a congressional hearing in 2019 he talks about this girl and then he doesn't give her a real name um, maybe he does I don't know he gives multiple stories and I've kind of fallen down the the Tim Ballard uh, rabbit hole mm -hmm. but he says that she she was raped about 20,000 times in oh, total gosh. 20 20 to 30 times a day every day um, she she was trafficked for several years and they succeeded in her rescue. I think she was trafficked from 13 to age 17 um, in New York City. And uh, Tim Tim makes a point in this video and he says it in, in most of the interviews I've seen with him that um, he would rather save a child than uh, kilo of cocaine because cocaine can only be sold once these children can be sold upwards of 20 times in a 24-hour period and it that's just that's just disheartening america is the number one um customer bless you for child Thank porn you. um for yeah. child rape and I'm so ashamed of that, that, that our dad, that's the, the number one thing, America's number one at abusing children. It's horrific. And I know, you know, it's not us doing it. But if we don't do something about it, if we don't become part of the solution to this, um, Gosh, there's another scripture. <laughs> there, there are so many scriptures. There's so much God's word says about kiddos. Um, yeah. We're supposed to intervene for those who have no voice and are being led um, like sheep to the slaughter. We are supposed to um, pursue, overtake, and succeed in the rescue. Mm -hmm. Um we can't just sit idly by and say my not my kid not my problem because <laughs> i think of that that poem that was written in regards to world war ii you know when they came for the so-and-sos didn't bother me i wasn't a so-and-so oh. you know and then when you know i i don't remember it exactly um uh, somebody is probably quoting it and wanting to hit me. But, you know, when they came for the Jews, I wasn't a Jew. I didn't worry about it. When they came for yeah. the gypsies, I wasn't a gypsy. I didn't worry about well, it. Well, you're when kind of hearkening back to our previous episode, right? About about how globalism makes people apathetic towards pain and suffering. And that's right, because one death is a tragedy, a million right. is a statistic. Statistic. Yep. You know, um, but if we don't do anything, eventually they're going to come for our children. And, and uh, uh, I would say they're they're already there. Well, honest. they are already there. There are a lot of um, American kids who go missing. And you know what? Honestly, it doesn't matter where these children are from. They're God's Absolutely children, not. man. They're they're God's children first and foremost. And if we don't succeed in the rescue, who in the world will? Yeah. We, um, we have got to. The only thing I was going to say about this is uh, you, you brought up a really good point about it being so sh 
like the thing that no one wants to talk about. Um, I think that I think it's no less, let's say intense. I think it's no less intense than shattering someone's worldview when they realize that they don't know what the Bible is actually talking about. Like I, you and I have had to go, go through when we figure out, uh, oh, that's what happened at the beginning. Oh, it's such a, it's it's such an uncomfortable conversation to have because you 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 don't have any way to to grapple with it and you literally get the rug pulled out from under you um right. all of the stones that you thought that you had built to help you understand reality get shattered um not trying to make any kind of megalithic or ziggurat pun here that's not the intention i mean that very literally like you, that this house of cards that you built comes tumbling down and this is one of those topics that's so egregious and so gross th that it it kind of boggles the mind at how sick it is it's 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 it is a sickness like an absolute sickness it's yeah. It's vile. Um, there are two other points I kind of want to get to that they make in the video. Um, I'm going to go to minute 40. Michelle. And I think this is where Jordan helps us to understand how monsters are made. Hmm. Yeah. The, the development of the fantasies of very, very dark people. You see that they brood and fantasize in isolation for years. And the fantasies get darker and darker and darker. So they're bitter and resentful to begin with. And then they start fantasizing about, well, what they would want. That can take a sexual end or it can take a very violent end or it can take both. And what they're really after is the ultimate in revenge. And on the sexual front, they find a kick in extending the, what would you call it, unacceptability of the fantasy one stage at a time. Um, the, the famous and extremely attractive sexual serial killer. What was his name? It's a famous photograph of him like this. Very attractive man. Do you, do you remember his Ted name? Bundy. Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy detailed out exactly how his fantasies progressed as he became more and more involved with pornography. And what happens in some sense is that these people who are nursing these terrible fantasies want to stay on the edge of novelty. And so their fantasies get darker and darker and darker as they progress down that road. And so after a thousand such micro progressions, they end up in exactly the sort of pit that you're describing. And some of that is pure sexual kick because of the novelty. And, but it's got this sadistic and perverse, uh, vengeful twist. And you can think about it this way. You know, I think it says in the Gospels that, you know, it would be better that, that a millstone was hung around your neck and that you were cast into the abyss than to do harm to any of God's children, let's say. Mm -hmm. And the, that's actually where the perverse delight comes because the most egregious possible sin, let's say, is the violent sexual abuse of the most innocent possible person. And the perverse novelty kick is highest at exactly that point. And then that just goes from bad to worse. And there's a thousand or even 10,000 micro decisions that go along with that. There's also a great book called Ordinary Men. This is well worth reading, although it's a bloody catastrophe to read, I'll tell you. It details out how a group of German policemen who were moved to Poland during World War II were transformed from ordinary middle class, working class, or sorry, ordinary working class men, um, old enough to not have been raised under the Nazi regime, by the way, and so not propagandized into a kind of mindless obedience, how they went from being perfectly ordinary policemen to the sort of people who could take naked pregnant women out into the middle of the field and shoot them in the back of the head. And it isn't like they had an easy time with that. Some of them reported the same sort of thing that you reported when you first watched that video. They, they, what they were being called upon to do stage by stage made them physically ill. And they had a commander who actually had told them that they could leave the service if they didn't want to continue with their duties. But they felt duty bound not to leave, leave their comrades having to mop up the terrible situation. But it does a lovely job of detailing out how your movement from normality to absolute perversity is a consequence of 10,000 micro, um, what would you say, micro violations of your own conscience. Not all of them micro, obviously. So you know you need to know about the vengefulness. You need to know about the kick of sadism. That's that novelty kick that produces a dopaminergic kick that heightens sexual satisfaction. And so there's an there's an element of sadistic misery that can add novelty 
to sex, that's particularly attractive to people who are bitter and resentful because they actually can't find any willing sexual partners. Mm -hmm. And so they're angry at the world and shake their fist at God because of it. And so anyways, that's a bit of the developmental course of such, of such a lovely descent into hell. And, yeah. and the interesting thing about it is that people brood, eh? Like you don't get to the point where you're watching pornographic videos of children being raped without hundreds or even thousands of hours of de increasingly demented voluntary fantasy. And that's yeah. that allowing the spirit of sin that would otherwise crouch on your doorstep to enter your house and have its way with you, right? It's like a collaborative venture with Satan himself. That's the most straightforward way of describing it. And so, well, so that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you want to go first? Or you want me to go to first? Yeah, that's the, that's the searing of the conscience. Bit. Absolutely. Um, first Timothy 4.2 warns us against. Give me a second. I'll pull it up. You can keep going, go ahead. It's it, earlier, just, just a few minutes earlier, um, Jordan references Cain and Abel and how uh, Abel's railing at God, life isn't fair, why were you so unfair, why do you like Abel so much better than me, you know, mean God, and, and God tells him, Basically, be careful, Cain. If you if you were doing good, you would receive reward. Um, but sin crouches at your doorstep, and yeah. And Jordan mentions that the 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 uh, more the more correct uh, translation from the Hebrew is like an, a sexually aroused predatory animal. And it wants to come in and have its way, its its sexual way with you. And um, when he when he talks about um, a thousand micro violations of your own conscience, um, I think both Rick and I thought the same thing, dude. That's totally the searing of your conscience. Mm -hmm. That's that's Absolutely. what the searing of your conscience looks like. And we can do it with all sorts of things, but. It, it makes a very vivid um, picture here. So First Tim 4.2 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits hmm. and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars who con whose consciences are seared. Yes. Yeah. It's... It it's it's heavy, but it's <laughs> I'm fond of talking about the slippery slope and how nobody stands on a precipice and just jumps to get to the bottom. Yeah. But how you slide, um, you take one little step and then another little step, and and um, when I was talking to my husband and my daughter about this, I said it's the this. This slippery slope is a, um, it's a mountain with a grade like this, and it's full of scree. It's full of um, sandy pebbles. And so mm. every every step you take, you slide. Yeah, and you take a little step and you slide more <laughs> than you meant to go. And and um, that's, that's how I see this. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, I mean, there's something kind of I want to add here. I, actually, we may end up touching both the, the things that I'm really thinking about on on this particular kind of intermediate area. I don't we might not even need to continue, but we, we certainly can. Um, Jordan, certainly off the cuff, is talking about this. He's a brilliant psychologist. He's a brilliant man in general. Um, so, you know, no fault at what I, this is my opinion, of course, right? No, no fault for him not calling them what I think I would call them, which would be instead of micro violations, I call them micro compromises. Yeah, um, that's good because they, they same, same, yeah. Right. Well, violations, right? Violations are violations can in infer that that you had no agency in what was happening, but a micro compromise explains that you are the one who is in, in possession of what you decide to do moving forward, right? And that's that's really when you sear your conscience, you are the one that decides that you want to continue with that compromise. Well, 
And I think that's what Jordan meant by violations. Your Certainly. micro Certainly. violations. You're you're violating auto violations of your moral code. Right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Or conscience, I guess, is a more accurate word actually. Um, and and I wanted to to touch on this shell because uh, I know. You you and I were hesitant for a while uh, around this term because it's kind of a it, well, it's a gross term. It is a gross term. Strange flesh is a very gross term. It just sounds kind of nasty, you know. Gross. It just sounds gross, inappropriate, weird, you know, just gross. And but I I geez, I don't I don't think I could think of a better way to explain how God feels about all of it. Um, and God really does lump it into kind of the same category. Honestly, how do I want to say this? I was thinking about this topic and how vile it is because and, and why why it's so vile, right? Because you're 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 shedding innocence before you. I mean, you're you're literally in real time, you're you're shredding innocence, is what you're doing. Um and that it's child, the murder. it's the murder of innocence. It certainly is. It certainly is. Um, and it's it's you're you're doing it to a, to to a, a tiny being who has no way of reconciling anything that's happening to them. And I really think that in the same way God makes this this um, uh, parallelism to what the angels did with humans. We were the lesser beings. We were the innocent ones in comparison to their knowledge and their power and their, you know, they, they were they were overbearing to mankind. There was no way we could compete with them. And it's the same thing with little children. There's no way they can uh, compete with, with giant human adults. There's nothing they can do to avoid that, you know? Um, and so when we started, when and, and it's very interesting because Jordan was, he said it as, as I was thinking about it, which was the millstone, right? That it is better to be, and let, let's pull up the, the episode, just or the episode, the verse, just so we can take a look at it here. Um, that is certainly what came to mind um, when when he said that. And let's see here. Come on. So we can read it. Um, there we go. Whoever, from verse 5, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. I thought it was so befitting that Christ draw back the parallelism to drowning these evil rebellious oh, creatures wow. at the bottom of the under the earth under under the, the ocean of of water that engulfed the earth um right. it just kept back to the flood for sure it really does oh, it really does and it was all because of strange flesh right like god right. was like no more of this that's enough that's enough and and i think that that is exactly what christ is is um uh not emulating what, what's the word i want to say is um putting forth i can't think of a better way to say it that he's really kind of trying to encapsulate for us his true god's true sentiment about damaging in especially intentionally damaging such an innocent creature uh like children are um Purity, yeah because yeah. that's such a violation and um uh Jordan goes on to talk about that that uh, he touched on it a little bit these these are people who are mad at God yeah and what better way to hurt them what is the strongest hurt you can hurl at God <laughs> and that is to to defile and and to hurt his the, the most innocent most innocent things it's just i mean the, when we talk about the bible being cyclical it plays out over and over and this is the same thing that played out 
when God was like, if you guys go down there, you guys know what you're doing. You know willfully what you're doing, right? You're, you're committing an absolute atrocity to innocent creatures that have no way to defend themselves. And so we see it play back out again. And I think it's what we talked about last time, Shell, when we were doing uh, the Ziggurat episode, right? Like it's ingrained in our psyche. It's part of us. That's why it's so vile to us. Like it's so repulsive when we see it and our conscience isn't seared. And it's a knowing um, partnership. Yes. With with Satan. Yes. Like absolutely. really, it's it's nobody who does something like that can say, I didn't know it it wasn't always bad that that is always bad. Right. And 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 we, we see that ever encroachingly, right? By this I mean, because that's the only way you can get there is with these micro micro violations, these micro compromises, right? Is that you because that's that's where this term maps comes from, right? Oh, minor attracted people that's where that that's where that comes from it's it's the slow degradation of language to fit a narrative that you're you're feeding and how did you get here i mean yeah. i i literally heard somebody talking about it the other day like how can kind of like old school liberals support this craziness right because because we've come to come to a, a point so much where we're like oh, i don't know i don't want anything to do with them i don't want to do anything with them and so you're willing to side literally you know and i'm not calling out liberals in general I'm, you can have your political views that's fine I don't, it doesn't matter to me uh but, but what i'm saying is is that you you are you're so hateful of anything that doesn't fit your slow progression towards the other way that now you're you've you've backed yourself so far into the uh, against the wall or, or better said against the ledge that you're you're willing to take the plunge you know there's nowhere else for you to go and you're like well Oh well, you know it's just you got to you got to be loving on them. You got to understand them. It's madness. Not it's not madness. at the not at the um, expense of our children. Nope. No, no I way. Agree with you. Like listening to this on our drive home again, our drive home. Um, <laughs> when we stop to uh, go to the bathroom and to change the baby, I would not have left that child even with this mom out of my sight the entire time we were in any of the places we stopped. Certainly. Like, it's just, it's horrific. Uh, and and I think, I think I know, I think I know exactly why you're pointing at what you're pointing at, Shell. It's because, uh, one, you've dealt with it personally, right? Let's do this extra You've dealt with it personally, so I understand that. I totally understand that. But on the other hand, because you've dealt with it, you realize how palpable evil is. When you come yeah. face to face with evil, you are very accustomed to its ways, its its seduction, its its uh, conniving manners to get to what it wants, and it will take anything it needs to along with it to get its end goal. Right. And so, yeah, I absolutely understand you. Like, don't let your kids out of your sight. Of course. No. You know what? And, and like, <laughs> I have to trust in God. And he's, he's been faithful. Sure. Um, but I think my final thought on this, um, because I think it's it's hard to go any longer Agreed, yeah. on this on this topic. Uh, guys, find Tim Ballard. Find out more about Operation Underground Railroad O U R. Um, you can find it all over the place. Go see the movie. And there's something seriously wrong with the people who are saying it's a QAnon mm. conspiracy. Don't go see it. Um, you go see any other conspiracy movie. Why not That's see right. this one? Go see That's it. Right. Um, and having said that, America, sin is standing. It's crouching at your door. It's knocking. It wants in. And um, I would encourage you 
to watch this whole video, fall down this rabbit hole, let mm -hmm. your heart be soft yeah. and get involved because if not us, who, if not now, when? Yep. I don't, I don't have anything else to say. Uh, I'm going to go watch this movie now and find out ways I can get involved more mm. because this breaks my heart. And uh, yeah. if you decide to watch um, the Jordan Peterson interview, like I said, I recommend it highly, but do not have children mm. in your room that you're not willing to have oh, a hard certainly. conversation with. When I sent this to Ricky, I told him, don't watch this around the kids. And, and he came back and said, man, I was going to watch this yesterday and just didn't get the opportunity to. And, um, yeah. Yeah, man. <sighs> my yeah. people perish for lack of knowledge, for yeah. lack of understanding. Yeah. We have to know. Don't celebrate it again goes back to one of our earlier episodes don't celebrate it but mm -hmm. know about it let's fight against it let's mm -hmm. let's take back these children because god's children are not for sale no no they're not no they're not and that's up that's really largely up to us um anyway i have i i have a million things i could think about right now but I, I think that that probably sets the tone um guys we we will actually have um i'm hoping that this will be airing if you're watching i'm hoping this is airing um this wednesday which will be the 12th of uh july excuse me wow july holy moly um we're halfway done with this year um guys we're, we're gonna have two follow-ups on this and you know goodness if we get some feedback saying hey i'd really like to hear more about this or that or the other um, I don't feel like we we dealt with it sufficiently. Please, you know, let us know if if there's a if you know some way that we can get involved better, um, that we can support. I know not all of us can support financially. I mean, we're kind of in the same boat. We're doing our best financially as we can to to support stuff like this. But um, you know, it's free. It's that's still free. Well, sure. It only costs you time. <laughs> Which is actually probably the more more valuable of the two, to be honest. Um, the word tells us to overcome evil with good. Man. And the word says, if my people called by my name, humble themselves and pray. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, guys, well, many blessings. Thank you guys for listening. We um, will have some follow-ups, like I said, and hopefully by not tomorrow, but the following Monday, somewhere around there, we will, I'm not sure if it's going to be next Monday, we're going to have our next um, uh, CTDW episode, our next Christian Theological Dark Web episode. Guys, if you would like to go sign up on Spotify, just remind you to do so. Um, God bless, guys. Thanks for being patient. We're we're working on getting more content out to you guys and trying to be a blessing to you so you're more informed and you're able to combat the evil in the world better. That's right. That's the ultimate purpose here. And so. with that said, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you peace amen god bless guys the long guys Maranatha. Maranatha and shalom, shalom. god bless guys thank you for watching this episode of the christian theological dark web for questions or comments please email us at the christian theological dark web at gmail.com if you'd like to support us please look for the patreon link in the description this has been another production of CTDW Studios. Thank you, and God bless.